good morning. Welcome to uh, scissorsanddrumsticks.com. What I have here is a bucket full of my little friends. Uh, I cook with a lot of wood. I also use some chars that I collect from uh, previous cooks, which I've got to get out of this grill here, so hang on a second. The luxury of cooking with wood is, one, it's pretty much a free resource. I know a lot of people that cut down trees throughout the year. I happen to have a good load of cherry that I scored from a buddy of mine about a year ago. I use this stuff, break it down, make my own charcoal, add it to the store-bought goodies, and uh, add one or two of those little pieces of log there. We get it cooking. What I have in store today is a nine and a half pound pork loin. As you can see, the briquettes as well as my uh, chars that I gathered are taking flight as well. Right, as you can see, the flames have died down. Take my wood here. Get two good sized logs. Uh, I've actually split these with a hatchet. You can see my mess there. I'm just going to uh, set one grain side down and of course the other one the uh, same way, grain side down. I kind of push them in there, move them around, make sure they get full contact with the hot coals and embers. As if they don't, they won't catch on fire. Alright, as you can see, my wood has caught fire. This is the uh, gargantuan whole pork loin. Still got the bone in the back side. I've dry rubbed uh, with a mixture of just dried spices and uh, a little bit of dried dill and uh, basil that I've done myself from growing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that directly on the flame. Kind of sear it just a little bit. It'll help lock in a lot of the moisture. Pork naturally is pretty pretty tough meat. So it's got to be cooked slow. You've got to add a few acids uh, like vinegar and salt, things like that to help break down the flesh uh, during the cooking process. And then eventually I'm going to move it from here uh, to the cold, what I call the cold side. There's no direct heat underneath. That way we don't burn the meat and dry it out. Now if you notice, I've got the fat side on the top. Of course, the meat side on the bottom. You want that fat side to stay on the top. When you move it over to the, uh, the cold side of the box, all that fat and everything will drain down into the meat and keep it moist the whole time. See, I've got a good flame going on here. I'm going to keep this thing far away from the heat as possible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cap this now. What will happen is after I cap it, the uh, flames will finally go out. The wood and the charcoal and everything mixed in there will start to smolder, giving a great smoke. Uh, you'll start to see the smoke rolling out of here and this thing will probably spike to about 400 degrees. It will it'll drop down about 250 to 220 degrees uh, and that's optimal temperature for pork. So you can see all that smoke starting to roll out of there now. The flames have been extinguished. And you can see the, uh, the top side vent and the bottom side vent. I keep my meat on this side, so I keep both of those vents shut uh, to hold all the heat and, and the smoke as well. Unless I have my fire, I also have the top vent closed, but my bottom vent is about cracked halfway open. That's where my heat and that's where my wood and all my flame is. So I want to keep good oxygen rolling to that thing so it balances out and keeps heat going and uh, doesn't extinguish itself. We're looking at maybe eight hours and inside this pot is merely just vinegar a little bit of white vinegar uh, four cups of white vinegar to be exact and about a half cup of apple cider vinegar just to keep the moisture in until uh, all the heat inside sears the meat completely now I don't want to brush too hard because I don't want to knock all my dry rub off and the biggest part to focus on is these crevices and the ends the ends usually dry out the fastest. You want to try to keep those as moist as possible. Well, howdy there. Uh, come out here to check on this thing. It's eh, almost 1.30 this afternoon. I started this at 10.15. And I've been basting for about every 20 to 30 minutes for the first hour and a half, every two hours or so. We'll take a look-see. Here comes a huge smoke cloud there. Now the smoke's cleared, you can get a really good appreciation of the smoke cure on the outside of this meat. Got the cool side, no direct heat. All the heat's from this side. All right, I'm going to close this thing and uh, watch this temperature climb. And already you can see the smoke rolling out of this thing. Uh, the flames have extinguished themselves. And then we've got a nice smolder, good heat, and a beautiful, beautiful hunk of pork loin. All right, 6.30, remember I started this thing at 10.15 this morning. It's been smoking quite a while. I increased my temperature up to about 280. 
Now already you can see all the good smoke. Beware, that is not burnt. That is mere smoke and smoke flavor. What I'm doing is I'm putting a little layer of uh, vinegar, a little bit of oil. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to let this sit on the plate, I'm going to cover it with some aluminum foil, let the juices render back into the meat uh, for about 10 or 15 minutes or so. 